In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a starter strip on a shingle roof. Let's get into it. At this time, we've already installed our underlayment, drip hedge, and ice and water shield, and we're getting ready to start installing our shingles. Now, before we get into shingles, we're going to install what's called a starter strip. Starter strips are very important as it allows the first layer of shingles to adhere to the edge of the roof. Uh, being that this is a mock roof, we're not going to install starter strip along this edge, but generally you would install it around the entire perimeter of the roof, eaves, as well as rakes. Um, this is what a starter shingle generally looks like. This is Owens Corning starter shingles. Some people use shingles that are flipped upside down. We do not recommend that as it voids manufacturer warranties. Um, if you're using an Owens Corning product, we always recommend using the underlayment and starter shingle all from the same manufacturer as well as so you can have brand coherence. So this is actually two pieces. What you wanna do is just put it down on the roof, give it a fold this way and a fold on the opposite side and it tears by itself. No need to use a knife. So we're ready to start, start installing these. We're gonna install these with a metal coil gun. This is the same nails that you use to install your shingles. And you can see here, they're round cap, electro galvanized, and come in coils. We're using short nails here because on, generally on your overhangs, you don't want your nails sticking through. Your first piece of starter shingle, you always want to make sure you cut. And the reason for this is when you're installing your shingles, you want to have a staggered pattern. You don't want the joint of your shingles and your starter strip to align. I'll show you that a little bit later on. We're going to be cutting five to six inches off this first piece of starter shingle. When installing the starter strip, you want to put five nails in each starter strip. Owens Corning recommends two to three inches back from the edge of the roof. Five nails, so one, it's gonna be one on each end, and then three placed um, evenly across. You don't need to use a measuring tape when installing these shingles. You just need to be able to eyeball it. If you're new to this, maybe measuring it out is a good idea. You wanna come in an inch to two inches on each side, and two inches up from the bottom. Anytime you're installing nails on either starter strip or shingles, you always want to make sure that the head of your nail is flush. Uh, we overdrove a nail here to show you what an overdriven nail looks like. You can see that it's pushing the shingle through and what happens with that is it'll pop out easily. As opposed to this nail that's driven properly, it takes a lot more pressure to rip it out. So I want to make sure that your compressor is not put on too, too high of a volume so that your nails are nice and flush. The two important reasons for using a starter shingle is first off, when we're installing our regular shingles, you want to make sure that you have protection underneath. So when we start installing our shingles, what you're going to see here is there's going to be a gap. Now in between these two shingles, if we have water coming through this crack, the starter shingles is what helps it roll off the roof. The second reason for the starter shingle is you can see that shingles have an adhesive backing here. This edge is the most important area when it comes to windproofing your roof so that wind doesn't lift up your shingles. Starter sh shingles have an adhesive strip here. When cu coupled with the adhesive strip on the back of the shingles, provides for a very strong bond and high wind ratings. Once the sun heats up both these adhesive tabs, and forms a bond, it's going to create a secure surface and secure adhesion for years to come. When we install our star strip, we like to come out quarter to half inch from the drip edge. What this does is create a clean line for us to install our shingles. Uh, when we, if we install flush, what will happen is the water will roll onto the drip edge. When you install a quarter to half inch out, this allows the water to actually roll off your roof and not come and damage your fascia board.
when we're installing a starter strip, anytime we come to a corner, whether it's a raked wall or a hip like this, the concept is to keep that adhesive strip continuous. So you can see here, instead of having this starter strip cover up this adhesive strip, we want to take this off so that we're exposing the adhesive strip on both sides. So as you're installing the starter strip, just make sure to continuously have that starter, that adhesive strip all around the perimeter of your roof. Again, this helps a lot with the uplift of uh, and wind rating. Now we've installed the starter strip all along. Remember, we've got five nails per starter strip. The importance of a starter strip, I can't emphasize enough. A lot of roofers may try to take shortcuts or try to use upside down shingles. We don't recommend that at all. Install the starter strip, the same brand as you do your shingles. So right now we're installing Owens Corning. We're using all Owens Corning products. Now we're ready to get started with the shingle installation. Let's jump into it into our next video. Guys, thanks for watching. In the next video, I wanna show you how to properly install shingles now that you have your starter strip done. If you have any questions or if you'd like to do anything differently, comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Like, subscribe, and again, thanks for watching.